Gaius Julius Caesar, De Bello Gallico, Episode 18. Ea, erdres est helvetiis per indicium enuntiata, mordribus suis orgetoricem ex vinculis causam dicere que gerunt, damnatum poinam sequi apurtebat ut igni crema erdretur. As we approach the end of the conspiracy of Orgetorix, his fate is hanging in the balance. Ea res begins this sentence. It is feminine, singular, and nominative, and it refers to the entire previous portion, which describes Orgetorix's scheming and plans. The matter, Ea res, was enuntiata, est enuntiata. Enuntiata is the participle from the verb enuntio, enuntiare, which is a first conjugation verb, and it means to pronounce or proclaim, and it has this emphatic prefix. The matter was related to the Helvetians, Helvetiis, which is masculine, plural, and dative, the indirect object. The matter was reported, enuntiata est, to the Helvetians through an informer, per indicium. Indicium is neuter, singular, and accusative, as the object of the preposition pair and means a disclosure or revelation of evidence, it is perhaps more idiomatic, as some translations have it, to take it as referring to a person. Moribus suis, masculine, plural, and ablative, from the third declension noun mos, moris, which means a custom, a habit, and sometimes in the plural means one's character. So, by means of their customs, their laws, their traditions, or Gerorix, from chains, ex vinculis, they compelled Causam Dicere to argue his case. So the custom of the Helvetii was to put the accused, ex vinculis, to put him in chains, to chain him up, which is really a presumption of guilt, and then compel him to Causam Dicere, to plead his cause before a jury, before a judge, before the assembly of the people. So then Argetorix was ex vinculis. Vinculis is neuter, plural, and ablative, because it is the object of the preposition ex, which takes always and only the ablative. And coegerunt is from the verb kogo. It's a third plural perfect. Kogo, in turn, is a compound of cum and ago. Ago means to compel and many, many other things. And with cum, it is intensified. So, kogo means to drive or to force. So, they compelled him to argue his case from chains. Damnatum poinam sequi aportebat. And then we have here aportebat, which is an impersonal verb. It is third, singular, and imperfect, indicative and active. It was necessary, it was the rule that the punishment, poinam, follow the one who was condemned. So we have here this damnatum sequi clause. Damnatum through sequi, I say, is the subject of aportebat. So that the penalty follow upon the one who was condemned, and damnatum is masculine, singular, and accusative. So the person who was convicted, this penalty, feminine, singular, accusative, and it's accusative as the subject of the infinitive sequi, this penalty followed the one who was condemned, namely, that he be burned with fire, ut igni crema retur. Sequi is, a, is an infinitive, as I've said. It's from the third conjugation deponent verb sequor. It means to follow. We get the English word sequence from it. Because it's deponent, it can take an object, namely damnatum is its object, and poinam is its subject. And then this is in apposition, this noun clause, as an appositive of the poinam. What was the penalty? That the accused, or actually the convicted, damnatum, be cremated. He be burned alive, or burned up completely with fire. Cremaretur is from the verb cremo, cremare, its first conjugation. And here it is imperfect, subjunctive, and passive. And igni is a masculine, singular, and ablative of means. Pleading one's case from chains, ex vinculis, when the penalty or the sentence, if convicted, damnatum, is being burned alive, this would no doubt have a great distracting effect on the defendant. <laughs>